Hello everyone and welcome back to the Deloitte Women's Premier League magazine show. Well, of course, this show is all about women's football and the Deloitte Women's Premier League here in Singapore. And it's brought to you by the wonderful folks at Deloitte. As you guys can see, we are back here at the lawn. This is where all the Deloitte staff come to hang out during their lunch break. What a nice place to hang out, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can already see the looks of excitement from our two guests. Now, first before I introduce them, I wanted to remind you guys that you can follow all the action on the Deloitte Women's Premier League Facebook page as well as the highlights on SG Women's Football. And in the coming weeks, we're going to be having really cool giveaways, you know, signed jerseys, opportunities to get to know your favourite players. And as you all can see, I've got some really cool signed jerseys here from the Brazil national team and some football legends. I would love to get my hands on these as well. But of course, let's first, you know, welcome our guest to our second, you know, edition of the show. Of course, from Haugang United, we have Dania as well. Welcome to the show, Dania. Thank you for having me. And of course, Nuria, you know, welcome as well from Tanjung Thank you. Pagar. Thank you so much. And you know, it's real. let's get on to today's episode. You know, of course, we'll start with you first, Dania. You know, you came back from the SEA Games and I want to talk to you about that first because I noticed oh. your, <laughs> your hands is a bit of a cast. So what happened there? Can you... Uh, explain, <laughs> share um, with us what happened. <laughs> so in the last match against Myanmar, like it was I think only 5 minutes in the match, uh, I slide the ball out and the player was running and then she, while she was running, she stepped on my hand because my hand's on the ground. Oh no, and it was I think I saw that, yeah. Very pain. <laughs> it was very pain, so. <laughs> very painful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I cried. Yeah, oh my god, oh, I'm so okay. sorry about that, yeah. It's so, fine. So you're able to play with the cast on? Uh, no, I need to tape because like, the cast yeah. is hard. I can injure somebody else. Okay, but you're still going to play though? Yeah, I got clearance. So because it's my, it's something to do with my like soft tissues. So okay. it's, yeah, it's just like soft tissues and like some internal bleeding. Yeah. Okay, and speaking of that, you know, you're going to be playing with a team who is fielding a women's team for the very first time, Haugang United. How has your season been? I mean, your preparations been with them? Um, I think the preparations has been not too bad because like, because it's like a new team with like, uh, NU it's NUS girls. So our coach have like frequent trainings to help them like get used to like the game rules, like the offsides and all that. So like, I think the girls are getting used to it. Um, and like, it's quite nice to see like Haugang opening like a women's team then that means like there are more women's team in like out in Singapore mm -hmm. and yeah so I'm really looking forward to the season to play with like these new girls that new batch of girls <laughs> and Daniel you're relatively quite young as well I believe you are yes. how old are you? Uh, I'm 17 turning wow. 18 we are all 17 on this yes. day yes. <laughs> yes. today, today. today. <laughs> And Nuria, I mean, let's go to you. I mean, you're quite an experienced uh, player as well in the women's football scene. So how did your, you know, love for football start as well? Uh, I started playing when I was like five, six years old. Uh, it was just our boredom. I had this neighbour who stayed like a few doors away from me. And every night, his mum would go off for night shift work. And he would come out of the house and ask me and my sister if we want to play football or not. And along wow. the corridor. Yeah, so my mum was nice enough to allow us. So we would play out through the night. But the thing that I remember the most was we stayed on the eighth floor. And each time if someone kicked the ball, it would drop all the way down to the first floor and it would roll down like some weird kid or what. And we would just push each other, no, you go down, no, you go down, no, you go down. Yeah. So indirectly, those nightly playtime became my foundations for football. And to play against a guy, I think that challenged me. So I, but I didn't know that it was building up my skill. I think I only found out that I could play football when I started playing my schoolmates in, in school eventually. Yeah. Yeah, and that got you to actually picking up football because you shared as well mm. earlier that you, you know, joined the CCA, right? Yeah, that correct, in Poly, yeah. Okay, so that was how it started. I mean, Dania, you're, like I said, I mean, it's very rare to see women, especially now, young girls, you know, getting into <laughs> football. And, and, you know, this is the first time you're launching the league after two years again. Yes. So, during this two year break, right, how did you, like, you know, cope with no football? What do you do to get yourself excited again? <laughs> In, during these two years, it wasn't really no football because like in the national, we we have to take like a PCR test and we go for trainings. Okay. Or if not, we have Zoom trainings. So I wouldn't say that I was like out of football for the two years. Instead, I had a lot of football training sessions. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Like a bit on like on the field. It was like at the start of COVID, it was more of Zoom trainings. Yeah. If like if we have Zoom trainings, then we must go for runs that kind and send our timings to coaches. Yeah. So I wasn't really out, out of football. So I was still excited and like still waiting for like competitions and leagues to start. So like our first one was in Tajikistan. We were all excited to go so because those, it's been yeah. two years. Yeah. So I saw all the videos which you guys should not see. You know all the fun <laughs> stuff behind the scenes. Yes. You guys had a lot of fun, right? It looks yeah. like a lot of fun. Yeah. It was very fun because yeah. like it's been two years since we even travelled. Don't need to say football, like, just mm. travel also. Yeah. Like, it was nice. Yeah. 
Okay, that's very nice to see as well that our lionesses are getting all the support that they deserve, you know. And Nuria, you also used to play for the lionesses, you know, before. Um, yes, so how was your, your experience <laughs> like? I mean, you know, seeing the change, you know, from the time you played and, and now. Are, are I you would happy? say she grew up in a very um, blessed era of women football in Singapore because the support that she gets, the opportunity that she gets. And I think even for her, uh, I'm not so sure, maybe in secondary school you had football CC? Yes. Yeah. But so, like, during my time, <laughs> it's like... It's young, it's all good. It's not like a good... Don't like a grandma. Yeah. Like a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, if, you're, if you do not know no. anyone in women football, you wouldn't know it exists at all. Okay. Yeah, so, so like you mentioned, the first time I knew of the existence of women football in Singapore was when in Poly, when there was the CCA fair and it was the first time I saw a football counter with actual girls, long hair and, and everything <laughs> else in jerseys asking girls to sign up and join the team and, and that changed my life because if it told me that hey there are other girls who actually play football like me or like football and that gave me a lot of opportunities to finally uh, play in the league yeah so i would say she's very lucky but i'm very grateful to see the growth in women football in singapore it's about time it's really Absolutely. about Absolutely. and in yes. some ways i think you're right about how football has all changed mm. our lives sitting here today as well and okay, let's now, you know, have a bit of a pause and have a look at the highlights, you know, from match day one of the game. So first, some very exciting action took place in the Yishun Stadium, so let's have a look.
Now let's have a look at the upcoming fixtures for Match J2. As you all can see, Tiong Baru will be facing off against Haugang United. Tanjung Pagar will be facing off against Belestia. And of course, the big one, Arbirex and Lion City Sailors. I want to go back to Tanjung Pagar. I mean, you are playing with Tanjung Pagar this season. Yep. Are you enjoying you know, the team camaraderie? Because they are known to be very supportive of both grassroots and women's football as well, right? Tanjung Pagar. Yep. Uh, I would say... Uh, we were lucky, we had a really good season before COVID <laughs> came. Yeah, so I think in 2019, we won the doubles. So for the first time ever, we won the, the Women's National League yep. as well as the Challenge Cup. Uh, and I think for myself, it was a personal goal. I, I've been lucky to win like, the Youth League and National League before. I've never won the Challenge Cup before. So it was a dream come true to play in Sports Hub. Yeah. Uh, to win it. So something for me to remember all my life. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was a pity COVID came. Uh, but other than that, I think for us, uh, we are we're going through a bit of a rebuilding. We do have a couple of our dear <laughs> teammates who left for other clubs. Uh, we open up trials and we do have a couple of new players joining us um, yep. from a variety of background and uh, experience. Uh, but it's exciting. I think when I look at the, the team lineup uh, for this year's league, uh, there's a good spread of talented girls in all the teams. So I think if you were to ask me, maybe other than Lion City, who else is a good contender, I would say everyone has a good shot. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's a, it's a healthy level of competition this year. So yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. you know, speaking of healthy level of competition, I, I wanted to ask you about your position. You're currently playing uh, right back, I believe, right, Dania? Yeah, like as in coach filled me in right back, right before C Games. But before that, like if you see in Tri Nations, I play the yes. defensive mid. Yes. Uh, in training, sometimes I train a striker. Yeah, so I'm Oh, everywhere. very versatile <laughs> like this one. So can you be I'm a goalkeeper as well? No, I can be a goalkeeper. <laughs> Anything but goalkeeper, I think. So, so are you enjoying um, you know, where coach puts you or you just like leave it up to... Um, to of course, like as in wherever coach needs me, I'll, I'll, be, I'll play. I, I don't mind. Like, I don't have like a preference or anything. But like um, recently he put me right back. So like I feel like when, when he puts me right back, like I feel more... At I don't ease. know at ease because like, I'm always playing. Uh, I since since I started, I played centre back and full backs. Yes, okay. So I've grown like I've been growing up playing as a defender. Mm. So okay. like I have like a defender mentality. I guess. I see. So Ooh. it's nice to play to be able to play right back in C games. Okay, I mean, speaking of that, um, you were also playing as well in an attacking position. You were a striker yeah. with the Lionesses a while back. Now yeah, you're right. more of a centre mid. So yes, we're speaking right. a bit more about the stamina, right? Yes. So <laughs> can you share the change? I mean, it's, it's still an attacking position, but for you, 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 said, you were saying earlier about the running. You have to run a lot yeah, more, that's right? True. Yeah, I think in I think if, if you know football well, different position has different uh, intensity. So as a centre mid, definitely, you're not just an attacking player. You do have to help uh, protect your back four as well. Uh, but technically, <laughs> if you yes. think about it, every position has to attack and defend. Yes. It's just a matter Pressing, of the situation yeah. and which zone you're in. But I feel like centre bit is in the Cover middle of ground. everybody's action. Yes. You have to kind of support everyone, whether yeah. it's attacking or defending. So <laughs> yes, I, I feel that there is a requirement for high level of fitness and also awareness. Yeah. Because yes. you, at the same time, do control the pace of the game, whether you want yeah. to slow it down or speed it up. So yeah, there's a bit more responsibility, I feel, as a centre. Yep. Wow, <laughs> okay. You know, speaking of responsibility, let's go to a bit about, you know, some of the... the we were talking about challenges as well earlier. And then yes. how about, you know, like um, for yourself, I mean, juggling school as well as, as football. How have you been able to do that? Um, currently, because of like the SEA Games, the Tri Nations and all like the competitions, that, the, the friendlies that we went to Thailand also, I missed a lot of school. Like, I think... Three four weeks of school. Were you happy that you missed school? Though? Um, don't tell my teacher, but I have I happy, but like a lot of assignments that is due. <laughs> I have a lot of assignments due like this week, last week, and like, I've I've been given extensions, but like it's a bit tough because I miss like physical tutorials and you're like, in you. Uh, I'm in poly, poly year two. Okay. So and it's like a bit hard for me to like catch up. Like I need to do my own like study. Yeah. But well, what are you studying in at the moment? Uh, sports wellness management at mm. Nanyang Poly. Okay, so nice. I, yeah, I'm in the girls' CCA. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they do have a very strong women's team, yeah, I remember, yes. yes, Nanyang Party. Okay, and so so it's been difficult for you to... Okay, so it's a bit like hard for me to um, get my assignments done without like... I need to ask for like my teacher's help like after class that kind because I missed out on a lot and yeah, it's a bit uh, tough but like I would say I enjoy like the football part of it because like I'm giving all my time and devotion to football. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that's fun because like the company in football is all fun. 
Yeah. But it's like when I go back to school, then I'm back to reality. Oh, oh no. So you do need school though, you know. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you're working now at the moment, right? Yes. So can you take me through how you ch- I mean, you balance, because you have training and all that, and then you've got oh. game day. So how do you balance everything? Uh, she's a student. I'm a teacher. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I'm a PE and bio teacher in a school in the north. Okay, <laughs> hi case. to all the Just Nuria students case. watching this. Yeah, so uh, for me, I do feel her pain. I don't miss assignments. But uh, it's very tiring for me, especially the next morning after game day or training. So for example, uh, we used to have like, I think we have some matches on Sunday. Yes. So I'm not looking forward to Monday morning. <laughs> so I'll clock in like 7 a.m. for school and then I have to like take care of my form class and then my PE lesson and bio lesson. Usually I would change my lesson plan <laughs> because I'm too sleepy or too tired. Because usually if the game ends by like 9 plus 10, by yep. the time we get home, it's close to, to midnight. And then we have like probably like 6 hours of sleep or so. So I will change my lesson plan to make sure I'm still awake for my lessons and I can give my best. But um, yeah, physically it's really exhausting. So I need to have a really good meal to keep myself awake and alive for the day and, <laughs> and then eventually recover for the next training session or so. Yeah, so it has been going on for, for years. Yeah, ever since I started teaching. And recovery is very important, yeah. right, Dania? Yes. I mean, the, the time after the game. So how do you usually like, you know, relax after, after a game? Uh, after a game, like if we are overseas, we have ice baths. Yep. Um, we have ice baths, we need to do our own stretching, uh, foam rolling, uh, and sleep. Sleep is very important. Mm. I've heard I about the sleep, sleep part as yes. well, right? Very important. Sleep is part of recovering. Yeah. Can't sleep late, you mean number of hours you need to sleep? Is there like an optimal time for uh, you? No, I don't actually, but I would <laughs> say that, as in like, because I don't, I don't really take care of my sleep, <laughs> but <laughs> I would say sleep is important, yes, correct, but like, I I want to say that, oh. um, but I would think that if you have at least like scientifically eight hours of <laughs> yeah, sleep, it's good. True, true. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but like I think it's proven not to be right. Sometimes like some people need more. Like it depends on you. Some people yeah. need more. Some people less. A bit less is okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But like I think eight hours is the best. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Let's talk about the upcoming season. I mean, you guys have already played one game. So what are you guys looking forward to this season? Um, I'm looking forward to like the competitiveness in this league because like Nuria mentioned, like everybody has like a, a equal like playing standards because like it's quite uh, diverse players and like it's quite fair like there's not like okay di- apart from LCS like there's <laughs> the other teams does not have like a whole group of like um how do experienced players in mm. one team yes yeah. uh. So I think it's quite uh, balanced. Yeah, balanced mm. in a way, and like it will be a good sparring between teams. Yeah, it'll be nice to see. Yeah, I think for me, it's refreshing to see a lot of uh, new clubs. I mean, other than Lion City, we have uh, Haugang, we have Malaysia 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 as well, participating yeah. for the first time yeah. in the women's league. Uh, healthy number of uh, teams in the league. Hopefully, it will grow in numbers mm. with years coming uh, coming by. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how the new teams fare. And of course, like I say, there are a lot of player movement from uh, the past season. So, everyone's brand new, everyone's raring to go. And I think everyone's excited after two years of no football. So, it's going to be all out and a good level of competition. Yeah. Dania, are you going to be marking her on, on the pitch when, when, you, when Tanjung Park uh, comes in? I'm not sure what position I'll be playing. <laughs> oh, you don't know oh, yet? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> oh, you're yeah, going to be like the phantom that plays everywhere. You know? uh, it depends on my coach where he wants me to be at. Um, if I play centre mid, then I'll Maybe. see her. Then, 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 <laughs> then. <laughs> no, let's talk about you know uh, football teams. You know which because right now behind me I have you know a very popular women's team, the Brazil national team, mm. very well known in the women's scene. But I want to ask you, any team that you support, grew up watching, and, and why? Uh, I would say okay, everybody's gonna hate me for this, but I grew up watching Manchester United. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. The last season, <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad the season's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I've been supporting them since like before this disaster. <laughs> so uh, I would say I'm a quite a loyal fan because yes. I'm still here. Yes. I'm still here. Yes. I still haven't the changed shirt yet. Yes, yes, yes. Then yes. they have a very good women's team actually at the moment as well. You know? yeah. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're actually moving, making waves. And I think it's important that clubs actually bring in uh, women's teams in Europe, yeah. especially yes. because of the support and everything. My favorite player, you have a favorite. We were talking about women's player earlier, but do you have a favorite men's player that you know you watch? Uh, game? Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, oh, and he course, went to yeah. Manchester United. That was yeah. like the best news ever. <laughs> <laughs> only the the past season. Yeah, only the past season. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, but he did did help the team uh, during yeah, he a did. very he painful a period. Goals. Very patient. <laughs> yeah, very patient. What about you, Nuria? Do you have a, a player or a team mm. you grew up watching? Yes, I do. Eh? Yes. Favorite player definitely is Wayne Rooney for me. Okay. Uh, I love his tenacity. I love how he give it, give his all when he play. He don't give a whatever you know. He give it everything, yeah. and I because of him, uh, I wear uh, the number ten. Okay. Yeah, so I feel like. I want to be like, I mean, ever since I was young, watching him play, I wanted to be like him. So he's my inspiration in a sense, yeah. And speaking of that, has, how's the support been from your family, you know, um, and your friends as well towards your career, I would say, in football? Um, obviously, my parents are very, very supportive in fo- my football career. Like, as in, I joined football when I was like seven. That was because like they they pushed me to to just go in the football CCA because like, I didn't know what CCA to join. Yep. So I didn't thought that I would turn it into like a pro like uh, I wouldn't like go in national. I didn't wanted to take it seriously. I thought it was like just recreational. But uh, as I grew older, like I think I was in P six or something like that. Yeah, uh, Ernie pushed me to yes. go for nationals. Ernie, our captain, yes. Yes. <laughs> so she was my coach. Yeah. Okay. So she was the one that pushed me to go for like trials and all that. She would always update me when there's like other new trials to go in. So that was when I started like my football career kicked off, I, I would say. So like if you count now, like it's been 11 years since I started football. Yeah. You know, before we go and close today's show, I wanted to ask uh, Nuria, you know, a bit of um, advice, or I would say a message for the fans out there. Okay. Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an exciting week ahead. A lot of new teams and really great talents uh, in women football. So if you don't mind, you know, spending your weekends coming down to I think most of the games are in Yishun Stadium. Girl, boy, old, young, come down, have a look at how women football is. Uh, we do appreciate your support and and really with your support, we will we will only go forward and nothing else. So do come down if you're free. Yeah, looking Fantastic forward. Fantastic <laughs> stuff, Nuria and Daniel. And thank you so much for joining me today and. Uh, Deloitte Women's Premier League magazine show. All the best for the upcoming thank season. You, We're going to be watching you, seeing how you mark her and vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, for all the action, don't forget to follow the WPL, you know, Deloitte WPL Facebook page, and of course, SG Women's Football. And of course, I'm Asha Shepherd Footballita. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. <laughs>